So the third story in this collection is called Dudley's Sacrifice, and it was um, brought about by kind of convergence of a couple things, and one of those being a workplace where a friend of mine, um, at the time that I wrote this, was working. It was a, a professional workplace, um, or at least supposedly a professional workplace, where strange things were going on. They were trying to, to save costs and cut down and the business was shrinking and weird things were going on. Like they would only stock the um, the vending machines on every other floor and you know there was something going on with like which bathrooms were open on which days because they they didn't want to clean them so that they, they like had alternating bathroom schedules or something weird. Anyway this was a this was a big building and um, so that that building sort of played the setting, um, at least in my mind. Of course, it, it, this what happens in the story really doesn't have anything to do with that particular company, other than just that idea of um, you know these businesses that have to go through cost-cutting measures and try to find ways to um, to cut costs. And so some of that plays into this story as far as the setting goes, but then also some of my own workplace experiences over the years um, at some places that will remain nameless. And um, even even just um, the, the idea, there's an, you know, the, there's an idea in here about having to bring your own toilet paper uh, to work. You know, working at a place that's so cheap that you have to bring your own toilet paper is, um, you know, it's just, it's an odd thing to me. And so I was contemplating this, this kind of workplace environment and this particular kind of boss um, who may or may not be uh, modeled after someone. Um, and so I had this character named Dudley in this environment. And Dudley, um, Dudley had, to, had to play a major role in here. And so because he had to play a major role, um, he became the opening line. And even though he's not the, the point of view character in this story, he is kind of the driving force in this story. And so that, in that way the story shows how the, the main point of view character um, oftentimes has his life shaped by someone who is off screen a lot of the time and, and isn't necessarily the main character but has the most impact on the world of this story. And Mr. Dudley certainly um, has the most impact on the world of this story. And so um, I went from there and I had this um, initial line that read, Mr. Dudley was like an ancient native's angry god. He required the occasional sacrifice when business was slow. And that really was the genesis. Um, you know, I had already had the, the setting, already had the main character, and when I took a step back and came up with that, that concept of Mr. Dudley as kind of this angry god who required a sacrifice, and our main point of view character here is, is the one tasked with deciding who's next, who's next on the chopping block, because it's never, it's never the Mr. Dudleys of the world um, who decide who gets fired. There's always some middle management type person who gets to uh, have that honor. And so that's where we find ourselves at the beginning of this story. And I'm going to actually read this one from the beginning and read a couple pages of it to you. Hope you enjoy it. This is called Dudley Sacrifice. Dudley Sacrifice was printed in 2011 in Epiphany Magazine online. Mr. Dudley was like an ancient native's angry god. He required the occasional sacrifice when business was slow. And business was slow. Tony scanned the list of employees looking for the next victim. Tony played the role of the village witch doctor, charged with finding the virgin to dump into the volcano. That leaves Lisa out, he thought. It was the kind of joke he would never tell, but it made him chuckle nonetheless. He imagined himself complete with loincloth and painted face, feathers arranged in some sort of indigenous-looking headdress, leading Lisa Nato to the edge of the volcano, pushing her in and watching as the disgruntled business god belched her right back out. He wouldn't want herpes. 
regional gods are like that. So are regional managers. Everyone watched Dudley keep Lisa at arm's length at the Christmas party. Employees leered and whispered from behind half-filled glasses and giggled behind the shield of their hors d'oeuvres. Lisa was drunk. Tony could tell because she was making more sense than she normally did. And she followed Dudley like a puppy. And that's cliché. She followed him like she was a cartoon goat, and he was trailing behind him the most elaborate, enticing collection of tin cans on which she wanted to chew. A few of Lisa's work friends had attempted to run half-hearted interference and distract her from Dudley's cans. Dudley, whose face was as easy to read as the USA Today, was clearly annoyed. But Lisa was convinced that by raving about the clam dip and complimenting Dudley's light-up light reindeer nose sweater, she would finally achieve the conquest that had eluded her. Dudley left that party early. Everyone went back to calling him Dud Dud Dudley, imitating his occasional verbal tick. Tony didn't join in on this name calling, but he didn't correct them either. It was Christmas after all. It was good that Dudley left when he did, because a few drinks later, Lisa's appropriateness filter, which had been on low, granted, was now switched completely off. Had Dudley stayed, all the commotion between Lisa and Stephen from accounting, the cornering in the kitchen, the groping, the begging to see his big fat calculator, and the request to teach her how to multiply, all of that would have been directed toward Dudley. But that was four months ago, and Lisa had complied with the restraining order. Human resources and accounting are on separate floors, so it wasn't that hard for her to avoid Stephen. In fact, after the party and three weeks of court-appointed treatment, Lisa's work had actually improved. Tony returned to the list. You can read the rest of Dudley's Sacrifice in my collection, Five Stories, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.